I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Zach Burks, the CEO and founder of Mintable. Zach, welcome to the show and thanks so much for taking the time. Thanks, Ashton. I appreciate it. Glad to be on. You're very welcome. I'd love to kick off the interview by hearing a little bit about what you and your team are working on with Mintable and how you're utilizing the blockchain to disrupt commerce. Yeah, so Mintable is a online platform for content creators to take the work that they're creating and tokenize it. And we use these tokens called NFTs, which are non-fungible tokens. Um, and what that means is that you can take something like artwork or you can take something like uh, music or maybe a deed to a house and you can put that as a item that is digitally tangible on the blockchain. And so you'll be able to own this item in your wallet. Uh, a lot of people are really already familiar with this, um, with like CryptoKitties or God's Unchained trading cards. It's essentially um, a, a mechanism for you to be able to kind of create a singular item uh, and represent that on the blockchain. So for a content creator, it allows kind of new mechanisms for continuous engagement. So if you create artwork, you can make 10 prints, which are like 10 tokens. And you can say, I'm only going to make 10 of these. And these are the only 10 that will ever exist. And um, you can verify with 100% authenticity that I am the owner and that I own this asset in my wallet. Mm -hmm. um, and so that allows for like a collectible aspect to be attached to, you know, like a JPEG, which you really can't do if you don't utilize the blockchain. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, a, it's an interesting platform that allows for kind of a new dynamic for content creators to engage their fans or their supporters. Yeah, it's definitely interesting. And it is more of a new dynamic. And what we've seen with the Crypto Kitties and Gods Unchained, as you mentioned, we have these digital cards. But as we move into tokenizing more things, it seems like you know any real world item, you can sort of tokenize and create a unique version of it on the blockchain. Uh, but it really hasn't come to fruition in terms of a lot of things in the real world getting tokenized yet. It's sort of early stage, but it shows a lot of promise. You know, when did you first get interested in NFTs and you know, how early on in the NFT stage uh, did you start thinking of conceptualizing Mintable? So I was actually really lucky and I found NFTs uh, pretty much as soon as they were like introduced into the ecosystem, right? Uh, I like to say I was the first person to ever make money on CryptoKitties, uh, which is a weird flex, but it was because uh, before it went live at the hackathon that they were presenting at, I was able to play around with it and I won the mm -hmm. first prize that they were mm -hmm. giving out. Um, so when CryptoKitties came out, they uh, they kind of started the NFT um, like craze. There was a, an example before them called CryptoPunks a few months before, um, but that didn't really associate these kind of non-fungible tokens to a standard. Um, so when I found that, that was about late 2017. And then um, from that point forward, I just never looked back. I was like, wow, you know, these, the, the potential here of what it could, you know, apply to is, is massive. Um, so after I found that, I started working on a project in California for food traceability to track food uh, along its supply chain using these non-fungible tokens uh, from, you know, the, the farm to the consumer. Uh, I had a paper published on that with the IEEE. Uh, and then later I was... Um, working on a, uh, a project and I needed kind of something to do. And so I just, because I like NFTs, I made this NFT creator and manager uh, and that kind of evolved into Mintable over time. Uh, Mintable became the first uh, kind of minting platform. So there was no other place for you to mint a token. Uh, and then we were also the first to be a manager for those tokens because they weren't widely supported at the time. So it was hard for you to like transfer them or to mint more tokens. Mm -hmm. um, and then, uh, you know, as time went on, we just kept evolving and evolving, releasing different features to kind of push the space forward. Very cool. And now with Mintable, you're able to tokenize, as you mentioned, like artists can tokenize their content or you can tokenize, you know, any real world asset. If there's an artist that's interested in potentially tokenizing their artwork and being able to monetize that online, you know, do they need to have any technical knowledge or how easy is it for them to go and get that done? Yeah, so it's actually super easy. Uh, it's, you're, it's, it's essentially you just fill out some information. You say like, what's the name? Um, you know, what, what was the description? Uh, if I'm gonna sell it, what price am I gonna sell it at? Uh, and then we allow you to upload any file. So, you know, you can upload 
from a JPEG to an MP3 to a zip file with you know hundreds of different files in there. Mm -hmm. So you can essentially tokenize anything that's digital. Now, doing real world items is like the first thing that your mind goes to. Like, I'm going to tokenize my car mm -hmm. and I'm going to sell my car. Uh, but that's very difficult to do uh, in, in in practicality because you need to be able to have a way for you to connect the two assets. Mm -hmm. So if I bought on an exchange, uh, you know, like a marketplace like Mintable, if I bought that car uh, token, how are you going to send me the real car, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's that's the problem with the real world assets. So right now, uh, about 99% of everything is digital assets. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the files, the artwork, uh, music, or maybe access to like a form. Uh, but there are some projects that have solved that problem for doing real world assets. Mm -hmm. And uh, like one example is like uh, collectible bobbleheads. Mm -hmm. So when you buy the NFT, you can redeem that NFT on their website and then they mail you the bobblehead. Um, and then that bobblehead what they mail you actually has a wallet attached to it that owns the NFT of itself so that you have both those items. Mm -hmm. um, so that's one way that people kind of get around the problems. Mm -hmm. And uh, overall, though, you know, artwork is super simple. The whole thing we take pride in is the fact that you don't have to know how to code. You get a smart contract that you control that is made for you uh, with your information and everything, and that you're the only person that has access to control that. Uh, and that's kind of the value prop that Mintable provides is like, you get this, this smart contract that no one else has access to, we don't have access to, we can't do anything with it, and then you can make whatever you want, and then you can sell it for whatever price you want to sell it at, and you get all that money. Um, so overall, it's a really easy way to empower someone who doesn't have the technical understanding of saying, you know, deploying their own smart contract and running the tokenomics and things like that, or the security behind that. Yeah, and that's super cool, especially for musicians, I could see, you know, and a, a little bit in fine art as well, but these digital assets where a lot of musicians put their music out and then it just gets copied and sent all over and they don't really get, you know, repatriated for, for their own work, you know? So as NFTs continue to grow, do you see this sort of, tokenizing all kinds of music and fine art and everything where eventually whoever creates content will actually always be paid for the content that they're creating? Yeah, actually, and music's you know, a really great example of something that um, when, you, when you hear this, you, a lot of things will probably click in your head. But if I was a musician and I want to release maybe my new single, so what I can do if I wanted to tokenize it is I can release maybe 100 or maybe 1,000 copies of that single. Right, and it comes with this um, maybe some really nice uh, cover art, right, for the the album cover or the single cover. And when I purchase this, not only do I get the song and I get a download and listen to the song, but you as the artist can add all these benefits to it, which is what this continuous engagements for. You can say, hey, if you bought this single that I priced at maybe a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars, which is really high for just an MP3, that's why you add these benefits. You say, if you bought that. I will give you free access to any of my concerts for the next year, right? You just verify that you own that, that NFT. And now you're buying a concert ticket, a collectible item, and the song all in one, right? Mm -hmm. And so if I did that as the musician and you bought it, not only could you get the song, go to one of my concerts, but then you can resell that to someone else to get your money back or maybe make a profit because you're trading that. And with a royalty system built into that, the artist could get a percentage of that. So they can say, hey, Every, every secondary sale of my NFT, basically 10%, 5%, 1% goes back to me of the total amount that was sold. Mm -hmm. um, so in the future, I see it as a, a, a new way to kind of replace some of these older monetization methods that we have. Mm -hmm. Because, you know, musicians right now, they're making pennies on the dollar for every million song downloads or, or uh, listens that they're getting on like Spotify. Um, so if they release something like this with a big following, they could make millions of dollars just in a very short amount of time. Uh, so, I mean, I, it's, it's, it's blockchain, so it's a little complicated in terms of like setting up a wallet. So I can't say that everyone's going to do it, but it's been growing uh, exponentially since it's released. And like this year alone, uh, we've broken a lot of milestones uh, in terms of like the total amount of volume traded and, um, you know, the amount of users that are using NFTs. And so I really think it's going to be a big part of adoption for crypto in the next bull run is you're going to see a lot of people kind of uh, understanding crypto easier or getting introduced to it because they have these digital items, which makes sense to a normal person compared to like DeFi or, or some mm -hmm. other security protocol, you know. Um, so I, I think it's going to continue to grow massively. 
Definitely. And that would be a super cool way for new people to get introduced to the world of blockchain and cryptocurrency is you, know, you happen to buy a song or you buy a concert ticket and all of a sudden you don't realize it, but your stuff is on the blockchain, right? And then through that, you mm -hmm. learn about yeah. it and that that's super cool. And yeah, you mentioned about you know, the growth of your platform. I know you recently launched, so congratulations on that and you've been getting traction. Can you talk a little bit about is there incentivization or how are you growing the early adopters and evangelists of Mintable as you've launched? Yeah, so we we actually, well, we launched Mintable back in um, 2018, right? And over the years, we've like iterated and had different, you know, we started with an alpha, then a beta. Mm -hmm. What we recently launched was our 2.0 version with a new marketplace, and that's on the Zillica blockchain. So we have two apps right now. We have the Ethereum app and we have the Zillica app. These are on two different blockchains. Mm -hmm. Uh, and we'll be updating the Ethereum app to match the 2.0 as well. So we'll have a marketplace on Zillica and Ethereum. Um, since we launched the marketplace on Zillica, we've seen a lot, uh, uh, you know, a lot of growth. It's been very positive, and I'm actually really happy with how things have turned out. We, um, you know, we've we've created over like a thousand NFTs on the blockchain within like the first uh, two weeks or so. Uh, and in terms of like the impact that it's had on these users. Uh, a lot of them using this is the first first place to be able to make NFTs on Silica, right? Mm -hmm. So a lot of the, the the users on Silica they've never interacted with an NFT, and the idea that they can take their artwork, sell it for you know uh, some sort of profit uh, is is huge because it allows them to kind of gain this passive income that they haven't been able to get before because maybe they're just not a good trader or maybe they don't understand trading you know at a very high level. Um, so it like opens the doors to interacting with blockchain on a daily basis to like an everyday user. Um, and the early adopters, they've, they've really kind of been, you know, super supportive and they've been playing around with it because it's very new to them. And they're trying to understand like, what's the best way to sell? How do I get better conversions? Mm -hmm. Right. And so what we're trying to do is we're trying to, um, you know, empower them and teach them like, okay, this is a good way that you should list your items for sale. Mm -hmm. This is, you know, make sure that you put a watermark on the public image mm -hmm. and high resolution on the private image and things like this. Yeah. Um, and so over time, as the marketplace grows and there's more items, uh, we're going to see, we're going to see quite a lot of people kind of, uh, you know, adopting to uh, using blockchain. For example, the wallet that you have to use to interact with the DAP on Zillica, mm -hmm. uh, they've doubled in downloads since we launched, right? And that, that, that correlates with the amount of users that we've had. Yeah. And so, um, it, you know, it's nice to see that we're growing the blockchain ecosystem for Zillica, as well as, you know, our own user base is growing. And for Ethereum, you know, we, we have thousands of users. And so when we launch the Ethereum version as well, uh, you know, we'll, we'll see the same results. Mm -hmm. I'm glad to hear that there's great traction since the Zillica launch. And yeah, I, I didn't fully understand that it was on Ethereum and now it's on Zillica. And I knew that you were on Zillica and that's a super interesting project I've been following for a few years. So it's great to hear that mm -hmm. the Zillica ecosystem is embracing Mintable and that you've had a lot of growth. And I have more of a higher level question for NFTs. You know, as Mintable platform continues to grow and NFTs continue to grow, what do you think are some of the major success success factors that will need to be into play for NFTs to actually get into the mainstream to get to content creators and digital assets outside of the blockchain? That's a good question. You know, um, that's that's also a hard question to answer uh, because you, you can't predict the future. But I would say that I think it's really important that we have like key influencers um, creating these digital items. Mm -hmm. So um, you know, just recently, Paris Hilton made an NFT and it sold for like $17,000, right? And it was just a picture of a cat that she drew, uh, which is, you know, quite funny for $17,000. Uh, but it's because it's Paris Hilton, right? Mm -hmm. Because she's a celebrity. And there's a lot of yeah. other celebrities that are also doing this under that same project. And this is on Ethereum. But the point is, is that we need to have like a celebrity mm -hmm. who opens the doors because crypto is, is you know, it's, um, it's a, it's a small ecosystem. So when we talk, we're talking to other crypto users and we don't reach the broader audience that have never used blockchain. Um, so when you have someone who is in the outside world and they, they interact with these items and they start showing everyone else like, hey, look, I just made the same amount of money I made in Spotify in a year in a few days, right? Then these musicians that see that are like, wow, maybe, maybe I should look into that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then... As that happens, you know, it's just going to be a continuous growth and it's going to keep going and keep going. Um, so I think that's an important aspect. And then I think 
uh, of course, you know, just with everything in blockchain, the user experience needs to be pretty solid, right? It needs to improve on, uh, you know, not making it so complicated for these new users. And that's what we try to do, right? We're improving the, the, the user experience for like making smart contracts and, and minting these items. Um, and we're trying to improve it even further to like accept credit card payments. So you don't even need to have crypto, but then everything would be, you know, denominated in crypto. Um, and so we're trying to do things like that to kind of improve the overall experience. Hmm, that's super cool. And yeah, I could definitely see some, you know, more A-level or B-level musicians tokenizing their digital music. And I could see how that could start a huge push because there are some musicians that are already tokenizing, but they're not really, uh, you know, mainstream. But I could see once the mainstream happens, it could it could move quickly. Um, so that's really interesting. And we're running out of time. But if there are any viewers that are interested in maybe tokenizing some assets on Mintable or just learning more about NFTs, what's the best way for them to to reach out and to join the community? Yeah, you can uh, go to Mintable at Mintable.app. So just like you download an app, so it's the same spelling, Mintable.app, um, and that's for Ethereum. If you want the Zilliqa version, you go to Zilliqa.Mintable.app. Uh, and then it's it's fairly straightforward. If you have any issues, you can just join one of our communities, and you know our mentors will help you out, or uh, some of the team members will be there and be able to help you out. And then of course you can just shoot us an email as well. Uh, overall, it's a super easy process, and you can dive in with about two to three minutes. You'll be able to have um, your assets tokenized, and you'll be the owner of a smart contract that's going to live forever. Um, so it's it's fairly simple. Very cool, Zach. Well, I will leave those links in the description box below. Thank you so much for taking the time to come on the show. All the best with Mintable moving forward, and let's follow up in the near future. Yeah, thank you. I appreciate it, Aston.